When most folks think of soldiers during World War II sleeping in the snow, they usually imagine pure misery. Men freezing under thin blankets, huddled in foxholes as their breath turns to frost. But what most people don't realize is that those same soldiers, especially the ones who've been around the block a few times, often slept better in those brutal conditions than many modern campers do today, even with all their fancy sleeping bags and insulated tents. The reason wasn't just luck or toughness alone. It was skill. Soldiers learned how to turn frozen landscapes into shelter, warmth, and a bit of comfort, using nothing but field logic, body science, and resourceful improvisation, stuff that, honestly, most modern outdoor enthusiasts have pretty much forgotten. The snow wasn't actually the enemy. It was the insulation. In sub-zero conditions, untrained campers often treat snow as an obstacle, a cold menace to be avoided at all costs. But you know, Wutti soldiers on both sides, from the German Wehrmacht on the Eastern Front to American infantrymen in the Ardennes, quickly discovered that snow was one of nature's best insulators. They learned that air trapped inside packed snow held warmth far better than exposed ground ever could. Digging into a snowbank created what was called a snow trench, or foxhole bivouac, which could raise the inside temperature by several degrees, even without a fire. Soldiers would carve out compact sleeping chambers just wide enough for their bodies often lining the bottom with pine boughs, straw, or even old uniforms, just to separate themselves from the biting cold of the ground. A snow wall outside the opening worked as a windbreak, stopping those icy draughts from stripping away precious body heat. This wasn't just theory. It was tested survival. German troops in Russia built entire snow bunkers, and U.S. soldiers in the Ardennes dug snow burrows so effective that temperatures inside stayed stable, even when it was minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside. If a modern camper applied this same logic, they could dig a shallow snow trench, line it with dry material like spruce branches or even just a layer of clothing and cover it with a tarp or bivy. The goal isn't to fight the snow, but to shape it. Once shaped, it stops being an enemy and, well, starts working as an insulator. Body heat was the real heating system. Soldiers didn't depend on open fires to stay warm. In fact, lighting one often drew unwanted attention and wasted precious energy. Instead, they relied on body heat and air control. The key was minimizing heat loss through the ground and preventing convection from cold air. That's why soldiers would often sleep shoulder to shoulder using shared body warmth as a multiplier. They also knew that a tight space held heat better than an open tent. A small snow burrow, even if it was a bit cramped, could trap a body's warmth and raise the inside air temperature by several degrees overnight. Ah, another trick soldiers used was managing sweat. You see, overheating during the day was a death sentence at night. They learned, quite cleverly, to strip layers before exertion to prevent moisture from soaking their uniforms. Then they would dry wet clothes near the body under outer layers, rather than hanging them in the cold. A dry inner layer was far more valuable than a thicker wet one. Anyone camping in snow today can take this lesson to heart. Stay dry first, warm second. Wet fabric will steal heat faster than cold air ever could. Now a soldier's warmth didn't just come from outside, it came from inside. The body was the furnace, and calories were the fuel. We you do survival manuals taught troops that a steady intake of fat and carbohydrates before sleep helped sustain core heat through the night. 
Hot soups, canned meats, or even melted snow mixed with chocolate powder gave their bodies the slow-burning energy needed to maintain body temperature until morning. Modern campers can use the same principle. Before sleeping in winter, a small meal rich in fats, like peanut butter, nuts, or butter stirred into hot tea, creates what soldiers called an internal fire. It doesn't make the cold go away, but it keeps the core furnace stoked, so the body burns slow and steady through the night. During the Battle of the Bulge, for example, American soldiers who managed to eat regularly and stay hydrated reported sleeping longer and deeper despite the snow and constant artillery fire. Their counterparts, who went hungry or dehydrated, suffered insomnia, shivering and even frostbite. The body cannot heat itself if it's empty. It's a physics rule soldiers never ignored. What separated the soldiers who endured from those who broke down wasn't always equipment. It was adaptability. They learned to convert battlefield debris into warmth. Spare sandbags filled with snow became insulation walls. Empty ammo boxes lined with coals turned into makeshift heaters. Wool socks stuffed with straw acted as crude but effective boot liners. Even cardboard, taken from ration boxes, was used to line trench floors to block ground chill. A modern survivalist, or, you know, even a backyard experimenter, could really take the same lessons to heart. Comfort in the cold isn't about fancy gear brands. It's about, well, understanding how heat moves, how air traps, and how moisture, yeah, how moisture kills. Soldiers back then had no synthetic insulation, no goose-down sleeping bags, and certainly no reflective emergency blankets. Yet, by layering natural materials, reducing airflow, and staying dry, they managed to create these microclimates that, honestly, modern gear often fails to replicate. This mindset, you see, can still be trained today. Anyone practicing cold-weather camping or prepping for emergencies should, without a doubt, master the basics of insulation from the ground up. Layer organic barriers, like leaves or bark, under your bedding. Control air movement around your shelter. Feed your body before sleep. And above all, learn to use the snow itself as your ally. Soldiers who slept soundly in snow weren't superhuman, not at all. They just respected the laws of thermodynamics more than comfort. They didn't wait for warmth. They built it, conserved it, and managed it as a resource. In the end, their survival wasn't about enduring the cold, but really understanding it. That's the difference right there between hardship and resilience. And that's the legacy these field lessons leave behind. Not just for soldiers, but for anyone who wants to master cold-weather survival the old-school way. If you value these forgotten military lessons and want more deep dives into real survival knowledge from history's hardest conditions, make sure to subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with a fellow history buff. Every episode brings you another piece of practical knowledge the modern world has lost. And who knows, it just might keep you alive when comfort fails.